on to our next program. We'll have a lecture for our next presentation by Dr. Fujito Ito. Dr. Ito is the chief of spine surgery in the Aichi Spine Institute in Aichi, Japan. Dr. Ito has led not only endoscopic spine surgery development in Japan, but also in the world, having numerous contributions through Asia and around other countries. We'll have the opportunity to learn more with him today on his presentation. 30 years ago, for L12 lumbar disc herniation, the 11th rib was implanted by diaphragm incision and interbody fusion was performed. I was out of work for four months. Back pain and intermittent claudication from brass hammer developed due to L3-4 spinal canal stenosis. This time, the PEL method was performed with an 8 mm incision, and I returned to work after a week. Forty years ago, I liked mountain climbing, starting with Mount Fuji. I challenged in order from the highest mountain in Japan. I carried a 5 kg rucksack and went down the mountain by running. Sudden onset of L12 LDH 30 years ago. At Nagoya University, a 45 cm left thoracic lumbar oblique incision was made and number 11 rib were implanted. I took no work for four months, so stopped golf for 13 years due to non-union. From my very painful experience with the 45 cm incision, I learned about minimally invasive spine surgery from Dr. Sanho Lee and Dr. Gun Choi of Uridu Hospital. 26 years ago, I opened the first miss surgery specialty hospital in Japan. We have done 22,000 miss surgery in this 16 years. 13 years after first fusion surgery, I started playing golf well for 17 years. From last August, low back pain and bilateral buttock pain darkness occurred after 500 meter walk. Past history, L12 lateral diff for LDH 30 years ago, a 45 centimeter oblique long incision. Make an 8 mm incision and insert a 7 mm dilator into the laminar space. An 8 mm oblique outer tube is applied from above the reach, the yellow ligament surface, while gliding L3 lamina lower edge. Once you get used to it, you can feel the ligament surface by hand, but confirm that it is about half of the lamina wall with an image lateral view. PL method step 1 soft tissue resection. Firstly, the muscle and adipose tissue should be dissected so that interlaminar inner ring is clear. Next, remove and abrade the soft tissue until yellow ligament appears. PL method step 2. Dissect the outer layer of the yellow ligament. Firstly, drill the inferior margin of the L3 lamina and punch out the separate yellow ligament. Repeat the same procedure and proceed to the deep part. The ligaments in this area are thick, long, and widely attached, so it takes the most time. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Repeat the same procedure. On the other hand, the superior margin of the inferior lamina can be detached in a short time because the ligaments are thinly attached.
PL method step 3 detachment of shallow yellow ligament more deeply after the interlaminar inner ring is clear drill and separate the shallow yellow ligament from the upper and lower lamina in the upper lamina the outer layer yellow ligament is long wide and deeply attached to the inferior margin of the lamina in addition, the yellow ligament is peeled off with a dual and a punch from the lower lamina. A little bit easily. PL method step 4. Contralateral decompression. The contralateral decompression is a 45 degree slope approach which increases the removing area, but the ligament is easily detached. The hypertrophic articular process should be set to the contralateral side. Bone removing and the superficial ligament resection are repeated, and the depth is gradually increased. The same procedure must be repeated. Especially important, the light superior articular facet has to be removed in the shape of a trumpet bell. While compressing the ligament attachment with a curettage, scrape the entasis and repeat the detachment. Drilling. Compress the yellow ligament by a curettage and scrape the ligament. Compress the ligament. Detach the ligament from the inferior surface of the lamina. PL Step 5 Ipsilateral Decompression and Ligament Release The ipsilateral side has a steep angle and is not easily seen and difficult to operate. Ipsilateral lamina wall can be removed using mainly 3.5 diamond bar. Finally, remove ligament dentaceous from bone with a curettage. PL method step six, medial half ligament resection. Removing half medial ligament from the midline while peeling with the curettage. However, in order to prevent the bleeding, never cut the thin membrane containing the capillary just under the yellow ligament. The ligament ends are clipped with ligament forceps and extracted. The ipsilateral deep ligament is removed with the friction forceps while scraping the bone entasis, cut it off with the friction curettage during the detachment.
توی تیج using a friction forceps repeat the drilling repeat curettage stop the last breathing with the bipolar PL method step 7 opposite deep ligament dissection in a half contralateral deep ligament must be dissected extract with the forceps dissect with the keratin detach the ligament with curettage stop the breathing with the bipolar Yellow ligament forceps can use easily. Kelson is also useful. Detach the ligament with the curettage. Repeat the same procedure. Finally, stop the breathing with cotton. Peer method step 8 Final hemostasis. When the deep ligament is rejected, breathing from the epidural space is observed from the back. So, a final hemostasis is necessary. First, cotton is stuffed, and the breathing is repeatedly stopped with the bipolar from the above. Repeat it many times. Stop the breathing by a bipolar. Once hemostasis is confirmed, Put in a drain and end the procedure. Insert the drain, fix the tube and finish. After 48 hours, the tube is removed and from 20 to 50 cc of breathing is observed. The upper crumb is the MRI of my L3-4 spinal canal stenosis before surgery. The bottom crumb is the dilated dura after surgery. Only one 8 mm intrusion. The operation time was 90 minutes under general anesthesia. 3D CT images before and after surgery are compared. The left half lamina is enlarged and the drainage is set in the sac immediately after surgery. Five days after my operation, I slowly started ascending and descending the stairs of the temple. There are four endoscopic methods in bilateral decompression with the unilateral approach for spinal stenosis. Most Japanese doctors are familiar with conventional microendoscope. However, we developed a strip with a diameter of 60 mm to 10 mm. Next, the PFEL method was performed using the Pakistanis full endoscope with a diameter of 7.5 mm 
which was conventionally used for PLD. It is next introduced to PSLD since kerosene can be used. Two levels of stenosis can also be decompressed with one incision. Finally, the recently used UBE method has no restrictions on the equipment to be used. I would like to compare these four endoscopes. In our hospital, MEL is most stable, rapid, and standard. UBE is, is able for many kinds of instruments to be used, clean and useful for any type of stenosis. PSLD and PFEL have no curved instruments, so it takes a little bit long time. However, the PEEL method was the most comfortable after surgery for the patient and was the most desirable method for me. I will talk about anatomical points for practical surgery of unilateral approach by lateral decompression. A. Soft tissue is an important point. B. Bone is also an important point. In most canal stenosis cases, interlaminar space is narrow. To prevent the level mistake, search and feel the interlaminar space quickly, and so recognize it under fluoroscope. Next, remove and ablate the muscle and fat tissue on the interlaminar space first. The yellow ligament is composed of an outer layer and an inner layer. If the outer layer is removed quickly, this mistake is easier to understand the outline of the interlaminar circumferential wall. The inner layer of the yellow ligament must be removed from the deep lamina attachment portion. The inner layer and thesis of the yellow ligaments are different in each of upper lamina, lower lamina, ipsilateral lamina, and contralateral lamina well. It is necessary to divide each to remove the yellow ligament. Yellow ligament anatomy is important. The outer layer is thick and widely adheres underneath the upper lamina. The inner layer is also firmly attached. Firstly, sublaminar approach is done for the narrow interlaminar space to remove the upper lamina enough and detach the ligament. Because the caudal outer and inner ligament layers are not so widely adhered, they are easily detached. However, never cut the thin capillary membrane to prevent excess bleeding. The outer layer must be dissected quickly. The inner layer must be kept till the last procedure to avoid the dural tear and bleeding. Summary PL characteristics PEL requires an 8mm incision requiring a short stay. Small incision causes almost no muscle damage. Continuous water irrigation provides clear vision and keeps the coagulator and drill from overheating. PEL has less blood loss during operation. The cannula is narrow and easily positioned. The patient can resume their social activities soon. However, there are a couple disadvantages. There are few suitable tools for PEL currently. Also, the learning curve is still quite steep.